Thank you, James. So um, I want to begin by emphasizing that there's people physically in the room. There are people who are not physically in the room. The audience is people who are not physically in the room. All the people in this room, almost all of the people in this room are experts. And I'm not going to say anything that you should, that you should surprise you. So the first thing is I want to talk about number K3. You know, A, A, M, K. So this is the free graded algebra. The algebra from generators, K star. Okay, number one, modular relation, A, and so one minus A, C one is zero, all A, that equals zero and one in K. So that's a little bit confusing, but, um, So if you look at the first three groups, K0, K1, K2, they agree with classical K theory of fields, which I talked about last time. But for example, K3, Q, this one, K4, the one of K, Q, this one of K, N, Q, this one of Z on two. And the K theory of the rational numbers is a builder on this. And I mentioned last time, if you look at the K theory of the rational numbers, you get a Z in degrees, uh, one minus four. Mind four. Plus a finite group. And in, in, in the Miller K groups, you just get Z minus two, so they're clearly not isomorphic after this point. So that's, uh, that's the first point I want to make about it. Um, and this is related to um, the end. There's always a map which exists from the K theory, from Miller K theory to the regular K theory. It's only a nice morphism. Okay. Number one, two, in general. As I illustrated, K3, um, well, let's see, K5. In five of Q, single G plus sine A. One factor is equal to Z. K five Miller, Q is equal to zero. So Miller K theory is a good approximation to Quillen K theory in some degrees, but not exactly. And it, but there is a, there's a factorial also. The K Miller K. Is there? Um, invert n minus one vectorial. That's its one of the cake clone. I'm sorry, it embeds in the clone. So it's almost right that there's these vectorials. So don't you mean that the Milner K5 goes maps to zero? I'm saying it includes in. No, I mean the backup one. The Miller K 
five of Q is um, Z mod two. Yes. The math from Z mod two to Z is clearly zero. Thanks, Mark. That's right. Okay, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to say about Milner K theory for now. Ah, K3 Miller, Q, next in K, which, which is K3 Q, which is Z48. So it meds, but it's not a, it's not nearly everything. So what was your question? No, I thought actually you can you know, come show that this is always an injection for n equals three. Well, the history of it is a little tricky. Susan claimed it in the, in the ACM talk, and uh, then it was discovered that it was a little mistake, and then he fixed it. So that, I don't want to get into the history of it. History of it always ends up with somebody making a mistake and you. The definition is that um, so this group is the Zersky cohomology. A complex that I which is um Then degree I. But here we have the convergence of the convergence of the zero, and then this complex goes all the way back. So this is one way of thinking about it. But um, another way of thinking about it is that um, it's I two I minus ten of Z I star box complex I'm sorry you write a little small I'll try to write it bigger. What's this thing that does it do? So I don't want to really get into it but Z Z print Z over I is the um simplicial complex or which in degree uh, in an eye Degree P is the, the things which intersect X cross the P simplex in the proper co dimension I. And what I mean is, you wrote degree I, then you wrote under it. I can't read it. My eyes are not. Well, this is to, to, so this is a three billion. Yeah, but that's not. It's a free, oh, okay. free on the code dimension I subsidies. So the thing that you see here is um, HN field K coverage is Z on I is equal to zero if um, N negative an I and then HN K, which is Z on I. Equal to K, uh, KN, Milner, um, what is H0? There's a theorem, H, N, in the R in the X, equations of Z, equals Z's, oops. Two n is one of the two. What is n second to next? Get that all the signs. 
in order to actually solve. So there's a relationship between motivic homology and, and Milner K theory, and his to Quillen K theory, and there's a relation to child groups like this. And um, so there's all this together in the interesting package. So let's see what else I want to see. Um, so I had six facts that I wanted to say. So the first fact is. H and x with provisions in z zero. So if I do z, then is equal zero and zero else. Second thing is an h and x with provisions in z plus one time is equal to oh, oh x star of the units. If n is equal to zero and um, the card group of x, if n is equal to one. So let me just make it convention x is always going to be smooth from here on out. Yeah. n equals one and n equals two. Yes. Okay, and then um, the third fact is this one. What are the other facts that I want to mention? Well, I think that um, I wanted to draw a picture. Well, let's see if I can draw this picture clearly. Um, Let's see the fourth fact I want to mention H N X coefficients Z with Z I into the Q is going to K is I to N minus I X Q. And this says that there's a, there's a very tight connection rationally. This is basically a result of balance and Okay, so let's see if I can get my geometry correct. So I'm, I'm trying to write a diagram. I'm going to get my indices wrong, but you they're right here. So oh, um, the fact that these groups vanish after uh, after this line, so there's a line here. Well, there's zeros there. That follows from this particular fact, and the, the first two lines follow from the facts that I gave over there, and. Um, No, all of these are zero. And there's a question mark here. And so, um, so I think you can sort of see what's going on. The indices are H, E, S, A minus Q is converging to K, e minus Q, X. Is a spectral sequence 
to the command. So I've drawn out the P. This is the P direction. This is the Q direction. And so assuming in the third and the fourth quadrants, this spectral sequence has a final history. And uh, the history involves many of the people in this room, so I don't want to go into the history of whether it was due to A or B or C or D. But uh, this sort of shows you the way that this works. And this is the vanishing conjecture. As if I is negative to zero. And N is negative. That's three equals zero. And H N max division Z I equals zero. So that's the question mark that, that, that are right here. And this is equivalent to the conjecture. So this is equivalent to A I N X equals zero, which tends to Q equals zero. If and uh, if I is less than or equal to N over two, with the exception of K zero, zero. So this is this, this conjecture I mentioned last time. And if you translate it into, into this language, you get this using this result here. And another fact, which um, I'm going to get to where you soon. So Z on Q, I. Z of I, modulo Q times Z of I. So I didn't tell you this, but one of the facts about this complex is that it's three billion in each in each degree when you evaluate it in K. So there's a theorem. As if H N X Z on Q, I, I still want to do HM, et al, max coefficients of new Q, and to I, if M is less than 2 I, oops, N, N, N is less than I, and, um, This particular theorem sort of conjectured by Milner about around 1970 and uh, Tate in 1970, and then Cato, and then Block, and then Suslin. And then the resolution of this was due to Wabatsky eventually. But many, many people played a role in this, in this game. So if I take this theorem and I want to apply it to this solid again field. Oops, I'm going to draw the same picture. Z by Q in degree zero. We have zero is a positive degree because of the cohomology. Uh, it's going to be zero in positive degrees. Here's O star modulo Q. Here you have the root Q for its infinity. Now you really do have zeros all the way out here. Um, let's see here. So K2, the field module Q. Here you have um, H02 and H11. Here you have K3 module Q. And there's a differential which goes like that. So H zero two of Q is Z one two is one Z one two. The differential that I'm talking about goes to H um, 
three three so q which is z minus two which is k three Milner q modulo two which is z minus two and so this differential is um with coherence. My non-zero differential. So um, this is the first place where a differential could be, and it actually is, but it gives you some sort of an idea about what the um I'll see this is K3 Milner. So I want to point out that H11. Okay. H11 is H1 K, which is Z12. One. Let's see what K three in decomposable. Okay. Again, decomposable. What I mean is, is the things that, that you don't get by taking products of things with K2 and K1. So, um, what you get here is K3 Milner. Okay, goes to K3. Okay, goes to K3 decomposable. A zero. Um, and in the case of Q, you get to Z by two. So this shows you that there's a connection between K3 Milner. K3 Clone is, is governed by this thing and this thing, and this, this K3 and decomposal is related to scissors congruence. You know, you don't want to say anything more about that. This gives you some sort of an idea that. Why do you have this Z two point in question mark? Well, if you have the rational, uh, if you have the uh, complex numbers, this is a zero. And if you have uh, real numbers, this is Z minus two. And if you have a number field, it depends on whether you have real embedding or not. So this is not a standard now. Okay, so you know, okay, so this half from here to here is this one here. Okay. And this is all connected. We take a comment of the I want to say something about the comments of the And again, there are experts in the audience who know way more about this than I do. So if you're watching on Zoom, you can hear some interruptions. Oh, I forgot about something. My take, um, 
out of X. So again, X is smooth. Or from K. There are, there are trim classes which take the K theory of the field K and end up with what they call homology. I take n equals to zero, I get a map K is zero x, H2I x, which is ZI, which is channel I x. And this is the classical uh, turn class. Well, what else can we do here? There's a natural motivic homology and sometimes universal with respect to homology theory just coming out of X, satisfying nice properties. So there's a there's a map to drawn homology from the motivic homology to drawn homology. And the composition of this is the is the drawn homology turn classes. Delag, there's Balenson, from the Dewey Balenson cohomology, which I'm going to write down. And then there's also next to the complex numbers, get a map which comes to each, one on minus n, next to C, is topological cohomology. And these are the uh, these are the uh, Burrell classes. So the canonical map from K theory to motivic homology that are given by these two classes sort of generate all of the other Turing classes in the literature. So if you see some lecture they're talking about the Durham homology Turing classes or the Etal Turing Turing classes or whatever. This is, this is how they think about it. Of course, the constructions of these Turing classes originally were very different. Okay. So, well, two cohomology is the cohomology theory associated to a Topological theory and the topological theory is within the quantum And um, there's this category whose objects are um, sequential chains. Sequential chains. So um, you take the sequential chains of varieties and it, it forms a um, model theory in the sense of quilling. And then you take the, the glass of, of uh, localizations, these neighbors localizations, 
and you take the class of crossing of the unit interval, can you localize with respect to that class of morphisms and that's what, that's what you get from the objects? So the morphisms are a little bit hard to describe, but um, the point is that there's, well, I should say something about the name of the sin. Oh, the Zersky Zen. The Zersky descent basically says it's behaving like a sheep in the Zersky topology. And his name is descends basically says if you have a U, the unit X, you have a proper, and from X prime, as you pull back, right? And you want uh, an exam shifting property. And the exam shifting property says so for every x and x, there exists, there exists a y in. Let me get an x prime. X prime. Property that you not the fields. You have X prime. And it's more of a test of the mistake So you want to, to say that says something is a sheaf of the mistake topology. Say that if you have a, a square like this, then you get a bullback square of, of, when you evaluate the sheaf. And also, there should be a sheet of Zersky you know, sheets. Okay, so you take this. There's two spirits. Oh, um, then we work over a field so I don't get complicated. Anytime you think of a speck of a field you're working with, you think of that as a point. So if you take a bunch of constraint union of copies of the speck of K in every degree, you can form a simplicial sphere. And then there's GM, is A1 minus zero. And that's a, that's a variety, so it's a sheaf of varieties by itself. And um, E1, which is S1, and M. I don't think I said this, but basically, these should be pointed spheres, pointed sheaves. The base point of GM is one, point 1. The base point of the N sphere is the thing that we would normally consider as 1. And the base point here is the thing that you normally consider one zero. So we have two spheres. So we have the limit. That's n x plus one. Plus one. The drink limit is uh, this index goes to zero. I mean, s n plus two, s two slash x. So when you take the limit with respect to this variable, you get um, you get a spectrum. Oh, uh, right. The corresponding stable category. One last thing. Okay. 
Three days of limit. Wait a second, Mark. This is not the SHK. The SHK is the other one, right? Take the limit yeah. of um, one. This is this is the thing I want to This is not one. This is the sequential. The reason I mentioned that there are two of them is because connected in different ways. So more classical mathematics. We have the notion of a few one spectrum. This series of nine V zero, E one, E N, objects in my my category with maps. Especially and plus one. We have an S one spectrum. Be a series of nine D zero, E one, together with maps. S one, especially in D plus one. So here, Omega because the mass S zero to S n. Let's see. There's a convention. The convention is um, we put a R to the S. We're talking about spectra. Here's a result of the means. You say the same as 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 And that's press in press zero to S zero. The GWK, which is the room the event room. Uh, 
The result, the line that you quoted is in the category of P1 spectrum. The category of P1 spectrum, you have the good and big group, right? No, I mean the one above it. Is on the thing. Okay. 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 No, no, that's okay. So what's the difference between this group and this group? Uh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. The, the S, the S is a this is a P1. You have two, 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 two kinds of sphere, sphere sector. You have the yeah, S1 sphere. This is the sphere, the P1 sphere spectrum. Then the GWK is the S0, S0. That's Morel's theory. Okay. And, uh, and then if I did what I was trying to write down, which is SN0. And Yeah, that thing, if the K, if the field is algebraically closed, then that's the same as the pi n stable. But it's also in the, in the category of P1 spectrum. The maps are not in S1 spectrum. But... As a result of Hopkins and uh... GM. Uh, yeah. You're taking sort of S0 to S0 smash GM to the star, you get K naught to the star in P1 spectra. So that's not the, the same as this um, just simplicial direction. So I mean, if I'm thinking about a P1 spectrum. Yes. Right, but there you still have, have two spheres, the, the S to the M. You know, I mean, you sort of, you know, SPQ. And we can argue how to index our P's and Q's. Yeah. And then the other result seems so what? Yeah. Zero to zero slash GM to E. I don't want to do hard on this because clearly I'm not an expert. Did I get it right? Okay. So, um, with the way that I presented it, Homotopy theory has nothing to do with nothing to do with uh, churn, uh, mean higher child groups. Here's the theorem. There's a junction. And the junction takes H K. Um, and um, when we look at the much more difficult piece of the In other words, if X that's in U of E, or do we have to do the X? E. This is in bonus. This is in the this is the category. Is 
So in particular, you yeah, shoot the U, you might see parentheses I. What are those max in the U Z line? To twist it a little bit, take the whole back to the U of Z, give me the I, square right to send. So Z, Z parentheses I is a chain complex, shaves the square right to send, shifts it by N. So this is just giving me another, another sheaf with transfers, perhaps from here to here. I forget the sheaf with transfers, I just think about it as a sheaf in the in the um, motivic setting. You get this relation. And then I also have this. Well, the maps in the stable homotopy category from X into uh, the appropriate sheaf is the same thing as the homotopy homology. The cubic coefficients are just the same thing as K theory coefficients. So that ties together the K theory, which is the homology and stable homotopy. And I think that's a good place for me to stop, even though it's a little on the early side. So thank you very much. Any we have remote questions? Uh, is there a way to check that? No questions so far. Well, then. Good. Well, let's thank the speaker again. And the next talk is in uh, half an hour. Is that right? Um, um four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. So the next talk starts at four o'clock. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you see you back here in that time. Awesome.